Excellent. So we've just we've just ticked over eleven. Um, so I guess welcome everybody to the community live. Um, we obviously we have one of these every week, and sometimes the team's here, sometimes the team's not, and more so it's just for uh, a good space for all of us to interact and get some knowledge out there, particularly what's happening across the crypto uh, ecosystem as well as inside Layer One X as well. So um, as an introduction, I'm Joe, one of the community managers, and with me I have Sam and Red, and they can throw their introductions in there as they wish. Sam? Yeah, yeah, so I'm sure you know me by now. I'm Sam. I'm the other community manager working alongside Joe. And Red? Yep, another community manager on board. Uh, also uh, involved with the X team and uh, really uh, excited to work with the community. Outstanding. So we've got, got the three of us here. I know that um, I think maybe crypto not might be on at some stage during the morning or afternoon or, or night wherever you are it's uh I, I see him sneak in he can never he can never go unnoticed poor crypto nord he can never just be uh in the back of the classroom as he said before he always has to be pointed out um so we see you crypto nord just so you know i can see you in here and um it's uh, there, there you are can you hear me loud and clear sir i can can you hear me I sure can. It's excellent to have you here with us. Likewise, it's great to be here. Um, do you want, so just as a, we've got a couple of community topics and things like that we'll go through, but do you want to start off by just giving us a, a brief overview of, of things that are happening from your end, um, any updates that we, we can get, any idea of what's going on from uh, the wallet end and those sorts of things? Yeah, sure. Um, basically, we're pretty much ready to go. Um, we're just waiting for a final sign off on everything, just to double double check, uh, making all making sure all the T's are crossed, I's dotted, um, and uh, that goes in conjunction with uh, the whole claiming process as well. Um, so we're just, like I said, just going through another sweep on that. So as soon as I get the final thumbs up from the developer team. Um, I will definitely be the eager one to get out on the social and start spreading the good word that it's time to go. Awesome. I'm sure everybody's uh, really, you know, I don't want to say relieved, but excited to hear that, you know, it, it's coming up very soon. Uh, obviously, uh, timing-wise, everybody's been very patient, so we're trying to... Um, really enjoy the time that's going to be coming basically is what I'm trying to say we're uh, we're very excited for it to kick off and it to be here I think everybody's just really eager to use it and that helps build the anticipation um, to, to almost a point of um, irritation even <laughs> yeah I, I get it I get it I'm I'm right there with you I just I definitely want to be using it as well um, it's uh, all I can say is it just enjoy the calm before the storm. Um, we're already working on uh, upcoming versions. We've pretty much got planned out till mid-November of some things that we're going to be implementing and changing into the wallet to enhance it, as well as bring on, um, as many of you are aware, L1X identity is going to be a huge component to this whole wallet and other projects that we're going to be onboarding here uh, between now and mainnet launch at the end of January and so um, as we've mentioned before there are quite a few different types of dominoes that necessarily uh, need to fall in a certain order in order for this to be orchestrated correctly and um, along the way we just want to make sure that we're we're creating a seamless user experience and that it's uh, pretty straightforward, there's no guesswork, it is literally just as simple as click, 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 and you're done, right? Um, that was our goal. Um, for those that have played around with the wallet, that have had the, the ability to test it, um, they, uh, I mean, all of them have basically said the same thing, that it's it's quite nice, uh, smooth, slick, easy to easy to navigate the way that we've designed it. Likewise, it's super simple to create a new wallet as well. 
So can absolutely attest to that. Um, uh, as you've seen, uh, myself, Sam and James had a bit of a play around it there and gave that sort of a live video, which we will do an updated version of too when we get the opportunity of of uh, all, all the new workings, etc. And I think, you know, obviously we're all understanding in, in the case of crypto, if it's something where we want it to be more secure, we want it to be uh, thoroughly tested and all that sort of stuff, I would much rather wait that extra little bit of time and make sure everything's 100% go um, than have something, you know, that isn't a hundred percent go type thing. I think it, in, in lines of any sort of wallet thing, I'd much rather it be thoroughly uh, gone through. Of course, that that to me is much better than having something that's um, half baked, especially when it comes to security. Uh, so I I appreciate the team obviously having the um, resilience with with us to to take that extra time and actually go through it and be make sure they're happy with it to push it out. If that makes sense, um, because you know I think. That's it. We want to make sure that it works. We want to make sure that we have the security. We want to make sure that everything's as seamless as possible as well. Because when we're when we're getting grandma involved, everything has to be simple. Um, and as we've seen from the video, I think it is. It, it, it's very usable. It's very user friendly. It is point and click, and that's something that's definitely not current in standard crypto wallets as well. Yeah, I would agree with that. And likewise, I mean. You know, we've got to be nimble and agile to the point where we can um, pivot. Uh, as we're bringing on and talking to some of these projects as well, there's some things that have, you know, obviously come to light that that has uh, even simplified the process even more so than what we originally planned. Um, you know, being able to spend the last few months sitting side by side with, with the, the head UI designer Working on this wallet has truly been an awesome experience because, uh, you know, it's one of those things that we have a problem to solve and we sit down and we basically cracked it out in the morning or in an afternoon and let him go to work designing it, right? And I think that that's kind of the 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 things that the community needs to hear is is that we are we do have our feelers out there. We do have our our mind turned to, you know, security things that are happening, uh, advancements or or exploits. Uh, we're listening to the news constantly about innovative new. Has anybody else lost crypto Nord, or is it just me? Oh, no, I back. think. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's back. So, anyways, long story short, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely one of those things that we're working towards uh, being nimble and agile so that we can adopt to a lot of the different things that are coming out. Um, I'm really excited from now till mainnet to basically uh, roll out some of these other uh, projects that we've been working on. Um, there's a there's a bigger project that's going to be rolled out here in the next few weeks that I'm I'm getting really excited about. Because um, it does definitely reinvent how we will experience crypto. That's for sure. That's awesome. I had a little bit of a lull there. I thought I'd lost you, but uh, I think I think I'm back. Can everybody still hear me? Okay. Yep. Can hear you. Oh, good. It's not just me here talking to myself. I, yeah, we've all, as Red said, we've all been there. It's, uh, very awkward. Everybody else is talking. You're over here like, can anybody hear me? Yeah, it's very awkward. Um, I, I suppose that's one of the, the big questions as well. Like you said, it's be about being nimble, crypto not, and we're having things that are updating inside the industry, and you know we're seeing things coming. We're see, we're even you know we're even seeing other exploits like uh, was it Balancer was recently redone as well. When when putting all these things together with the wallet, do, do these things play into mind? Like do do the devs look into those sorts of exploits and make sure we're future-proofed against that sort of stuff? Like, does that is that one of the things that plays into the design of the wallet? Oh, for sure, it definitely does. I mean, it, not only the wallet, but all the other project products that we are going to be rolling out. Um, that's why I can't emphasize the importance of L1X identity coming out here in the next uh, month or so. And that is going to definitely revolutionize a lot of different things as well. Um, 
if you thought interoperability was cool, wait until you see uh, the L1X identity and all the things that we can do. Because with when leveraging the L1X ID inside of the wallet, it's going to basically add just another layer to security or a widen that moat that's around your L1X wallet. Um, and as a result of that, there's a lot of interesting things that we'll be able to uh, tackle moving forward, right? With uh, being able to give you control of your data, um, allowing you to monetize your data, allowing you to share what you want with whom you want, where you want, right? And so there's a lot of different things that are gonna come into play with that L1X identity. And I, I feel like that is something that everybody should be really looking forward to as well. As we roll out these other projects, they'll be basically baked into those projects. I suppose one of the, the questions that arises from um, some of the things you just said, and I don't know if you can share yet, but it's one of the things I think sounds really scary is monetize your own data can you give us more of a rundown on what exactly that means? Because like I said, it sounds like it's really scary, but I'm sure it's more a, a beneficial thing um, from from us personally, obviously knowing our data is already out there, probably owned by Google or Facebook or something else like that. Um, are you able to dive a little deeper into what that looks like at this stage, or is that still off the cards? I can dive into it a little bit. Um, basically, if anybody uses a service for free, it's not for free. Let's just put it that way. Um, your data is basically being mined and sold um, and as a result of that even when you do pay for some services your data is also being mined and sold and so that is what truly the move from you know web 2 to web 3 is is basically getting everything decentralized in that component and as we look to, to what we can do from an L1X technology standpoint um, that's where we feel like L1X ID could definitely come in and help solve that problem. Uh, so not only do you, can you can control your data, but like you said, monetize it. Um, and it's not like we're selling your name, your phone number, you know, things like that. It's, if you're familiar with how some of these social media platforms work, especially, especially Facebook, um, you can't really target specific people right? Um, you can do lookalikes to your audience that you've built, but in reality, it's not like you can just go out and find some somebody to really uh, hone in directly. There's almost like a veil between the users and the advertisers that are on, on those sites. And so, you know, we plan to do something very similar with our ads platform that we'll be rolling out as well, is to have that veil of uh, keeping you anonymous, right? Um, so for an example, if you were a gamer, you could share that information that you were a gamer and maybe you like first person shooter games. And so if we had a game come onto the platform and they were a uh, first person shooter, uh, we would, and you wanted to monetize your data, sharing those two points of data, um, they wouldn't know who you are, they wouldn't know what it is, but basically if you're on a platform that is linked with an ad, um, you would basically get an ad served for a first person shooter game. So they're very personalized um, based upon the data that you're willing to share. And if you don't wanna see any ads, that's fine. You can turn it off type of deal. But uh, the cool part about it is, and I'll give a little alpha, is, is that we're working it in so that if you see, interact, or you know, convert on an ad, you'll get paid. So we want to make sure that you're getting paid for sharing that data as well as uh, being paid to interact with people. And our goal is just, just to eliminate the Facebooks, the Twitters, the um, the Googles out there, the middlemen that are taking globs of this uh, huge industry and basically giving the power back to you and giving the monetization back to you as well. I think uh, this is all quite exciting if, if you ask me and I'm sure uh, the community members will be as excited as me but for all of the grandmas here, uh, would you be able to expand a bit more on uh, the L1X ID? That would be great. Yeah, I can't really go too much in depth into it just yet. Uh, we've trying to keep some of the things under the hood but 
really it, it, it bo basically boils down to you know all this data that I'm talking about being compiled up underneath your L1X ID. Uh, likewise, maybe having a driver's license or a passport type of thing um, that you can roll up underneath your L1X ID. Uh, likewise, I went to the dentist today and it was a brand new dentist that was moved into our neighborhood so we figured we'd give him a try and it was so frustrating because I had to go fill out all my paperwork again. Um, they had to do a history check on me, all that kind of stuff. and. You know, if if for some reason we had implemented L1X ID and in, into the health space, which we're planning on moving into, um, I would be able to tap my phone, uh, share my information, what information I want to share, and specifically like my home address, my phone number, you know, that kind of stuff, KYC kind of stuff, but also be able to share my my dental records from my previous dentist. Um, that would have saved so much time so much effort and the best part is it's like those are my records they go with me wherever I go so um, it's literally like your passport to crypto to your information and to uh, make it so that you're not overextending yourself with many people holding um, the same information bits and pieces of your of your identity your online digital identity um, that is held in a centralized location for them um, all your information is shared but it's down to your and housed inside of your local L, l1x id um, that you're giving permission out is that simple enough for grandma i think yeah that sums up really well I think that's that's massive I think in terms of just general use and things that we don't think about often um, just as a real world example of that uh, I had to get when I was going to Union we had to do placement we had to get like a, a effectively a transcript of everything we'd ever been vaccinated for to to be able to take a placement at a hospital and if you're born before 2000 it doesn't exist like you can't find it anywhere it's just I don't know what happens to it. If it's just off into oblivion, if they just sort of like, oh, well, that's in there now, too bad. Like, there's no records anywhere. So this is this is one of those sorts of things where, you know, we talk about the immu immutability of a blockchain. You'll have those records and they'll be stored and they'll be attached to you and it's then your, it's in your power to do with your data what you want to do because like, it's just, um, I know the system in Australia, for example, trying to find those things is is near impossible. So it's taking that and making it a seamless system, which uh, unless you realize you need it, you don't realize that you need it. But when you do need it, it's, it, it will make it so much better. I, and I'm just, I really look forward to that as a real world use case. Oh, sorry, go on, Kryptonaut. 100%. Oh, I was just going to say 100%. I agree with you. Um, it, it'll be a... I, I think that that's when we'll start seeing real adoption in the crypto is just to when when uh, businesses can and users finally start seeing the paths that that blockchain technology can do to advance not only their business but for users to advance their their um, identity protection I guess you could say um, in in new innovative ways that are are um, fully transparent, but also being able to be uh, conducted on the fly as well. Definitely. I know we talk about, like we talk about crypto all the time. We talk about, um, you know, what our transaction speed is or what what the blockchain can do. But it's, it's these real world use cases that actually make it real for us. Like, um, you know, being able to have that data, you can go to the doctor, it's already there your records are there so it, well dentist is a perfect example like we've all had a mouth x-ray or something and then if you change dentist then you've got to go and find those things so your new dentist can understand what's going on with your mouth and it's just a it's a headache and it's these real world applications that i think it these are the game changes that we're not sort of aware that are coming just yet because we're so focused on thinking of just the online things and the other stuff that's coming i think it would just be just be groundbreaking um yeah, I, I suppose I'll 
just uh, if you want to do a, a quick wrap from your end, Crypto Nort, um, any closing statements from you, and then we'll we'll crack on with some other community stuff, so you can you can fade into the back of the classroom as you've always wanted. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm good. I I just want to tell everybody thanks for your your patience as we're as we're working through this uh, these last few testing periods uh, on the wallet and on the claim process. Our ultimate goal is just to provide a good positive experience for everyone that has participated in the private and, and public sales. So uh, thank you for your patience. I know everybody's eager to get it. I know I am. Um, that just uh, fuels our, our passion to get this done quickly for everyone. Um, and uh, you know, I just want to give a call out to everybody on the L1X team that has uh, helped from design all the way down to development of it. It's uh, it couldn't have been done with. It's it's definitely a team effort. It's not an individual effort by any means. Um, a lot of the good good stuff always comes from great collaboration, and so um, that's why I'm always excited to hear what uh, what the community is uh, thinking about places they can take it. I know that there's a few of you that have reached out to me personally and have told me about some of your ideas of where you want to take it and it's it's fantastic. I love hearing those stories and uh, I, I always love hearing the what if kind of uh, stories that come along with it. But uh, shout out to LMFG uh, that told his doctor that <laughs> the L1X is coming two days ago. Uh, yeah, I probably spent an extra 45 minutes uh, talking to my, my new dentist today about uh, Layer 1X and, and all the capabilities because he's uh, secretly a crypto enthusiast as well. Um, but he was uh, blown away by some of the things we were I was telling him today uh, of capabilities and stuff. So, um, but anyways, exciting times are definitely on their way. And just a quick one uh, from the community before you dash off. Uh, will the L1 Dex be ready soon after the wallet's uh, ready? Just in terms of integration, I think that obviously the wallet's the first step. Um, do you know anything about that end, or is that more of a question for AJ and uh, Jake? Uh, I know that it's it's kind of just a little bit of a dance right now going on between L1 Dex and L1X um, in terms of getting everything ready to go. It, it is a domino effect between two two teams. Um, and I believe they're coming up and they're just about ready to go as well. So um, I believe, I'm not too too up to date on where they're currently at with, with everything, but I know that they are extremely close. And um, I know that they're just kind of probably waiting for the wallet to, to drop um, so that we can claim and then we can stake as well. So um, don't, don't worry, uh, Kevin and the and everybody is kind of working all together to, to make sure that those dominoes are set up properly and that they fall in the right order. So you'll know when we, uh, as soon as we know, we'll let you know um, when it's time to go. Awesome. Thanks, CryptoNaut. We appreciate having you here and uh, dragging you up to the front of the class every time we get the chance to. I know it's, uh, you know, He's try, trying to fade in the background so you can be a participant sometimes, but we uh, we still need you here at front and center leading. Um, no, no problem. Thanks for having me, and, and it's always fun jumping on at random hours, dropping some alpha in the Discord. So <laughs> That's it. You have to watch out for Crypto Not occasionally just sneaks into the uh, chat area of the Discord as well. Um, I was just want to pass over to Sam. Do you want to give us an update on um, any of the competitions we've got running, what we've got with the invite comp and the grow channel inside discord and also give the community a quick rundown of your creators group yeah so for so i think i'll start off first with the creators group uh we've been talking about the creators group i think for a week now and uh, we are very close to uh, launching it for those that don't know the creators group will be sort of uh, a group of people that are active on uh, social media and are posting content on let's say YouTube, uh, Twitter and stuff like that. So we've been uh, looking at people that have been consistently posting and uh, we are aware of those guys and we want to share resources and content with you guys to help you grow 
uh, grow the L1X and uh, share and uh, you know give voice uh, to your content. And uh, in exchange for that, of course, uh, nothing is set to the stone yet. Uh, will we might have a pool of L1X tokens as rewards? Uh, but still, yeah, uh, the the exact amount still has to be decided. And I'm sure we'll have a, a medium article discussing about that. So that was about the creators group. Feel free to ask any questions. Uh, and the next thing is the X crew. I think uh, we've been doing good so far. Of course, the number one place is Albita. <laughs> and the second place is Ronak. And we still have quite some time for the X crew to end. So make sure you invite your friends and grandma, of course. Yeah, that was wrong. Hope I didn't miss anything, Joe. I think that's that's mostly a wrap. And yeah, as as Sam said, it's like how we grow a community is by starting with the community. And you guys are, are contributing. And I think you know you guys are the, the foundation and the base of this. Um, without you guys here, you know we have nothing. So trying to replicate you guys, trying to get more of your style of uh, community to grow our community. That's what we want. You guys that are engaged, you guys that are happy to be here listening and having the content. Because like I said, you guys see what the potential is from the inside and now we just have to get the outside people to understand that um, even further. Uh, I just want to do a, a recap from yesterday on some of the things from uh, Mike and Matthew as well. So uh, there was a lot of talk about obviously partnerships and then also even a, a little bit of I suppose what you would call alpha from the the launch pad perspective. So um, I know they talked briefly about some of the partnerships that are coming up and uh, Mike gave us sort of that uh, that little bit alpha around Polygon, and obviously nothing there is completely uh, like all the de details aren't out there yet. But I think just the prospect of that is very exciting that we're at that level where we're now starting to be seen as a a real force of um, in inside the crypto space where we're making these partnerships or we're we're being able to make that that headway into making partnerships with some of these bigger chains as well um I, I think that that just shows absolutely that we do have the foundation for something excellent and now it's just a, a matter of time and a matter of effort to get us to that forefront of everybody else so that was uh, around partnerships there and i know match Matthew and mike are over there and they they said they've got plenty of dinners they've got plenty of um, big things coming up and meetings that they're working on while they're away so at the as i keep saying the tip of the spear to to get things done so i think in the next week or two we'll see a lot of things come through that are going to be really prominent for our growth uh, as well as seeing uh, some of the the fruits that are already coming from the partnerships that we currently have or have built in the communities as well um, which then gets me to segue into this next bit which was the launch pad uh, and feel free to jump up and join the conversation guys as a uh, community based one or throw your comments in the in in the comments or come up on stage but if you've never been a part of a launch pad before um, does everybody, and even just throw like a one in the comments or something like that, does everybody understand how a, a launch pad works? One, that's an excellent start. LMFG knows. Um, some of you maybe don't know how a launch pad works. Generally, they'll have a token or their own token that they uh, have. We use um, Dow Maker as an example. So you have to have DAO token in order to participate in their in their launch pad at a certain amount. Now, uh, as Matthew was talking about yesterday, it becomes incredibly um, inflationary in terms of price whenever there's something very prominent coming up. So if there's a project that a lot of people want to get into, obviously the price of DAO becomes very high because you um, you have to hold a certain amount to be guaranteed allocation effectively. Uh, so that having that token, and obviously you have to have the, the base token on side of that as well, which is Ethereum. So you have to have Ethereum to get DAO, to get into the wallet. To, to, it becomes a very a convoluted process to participate in, in something that you might never get the um, reward from. So in terms of how we're slightly different to that is that the Layer 1, which is Layer 1X, is the actual launch pad with our own token. Um, and staking that Layer 1X gives you that that right to have access. And I think that... If you don't understand how launch pads work, that, that you don't necessarily grasp how big of a deal that is, uh, which th that's going to be massive for anybody that's already here 
inside this uh, call, any any of the early contributors, anybody that's got layer one X token early in the piece. Like you think if you if you think of Ethereum, for example, if you were if you had early access to everything that was ever made on Ethereum, wow, that's uh, that's massive. Like I think you know you have the the access into some of the biggest projects that are currently on the chain right now, and you were there at the the base level. Yeah, invite to speak. And this is good. It's not just me talking at you guys. I think we've got Crypto Psycho coming up. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I can hear yeah. you. I'm looking. I'm, w I'm looking and listening at the same time. And then you were talking about the launch pad. And I just get, I just get really excited about it. <laughs> because like, just, just what you were touching on. Like, if you could have got, if you could have got into a lot of these, like early projects, what launched on Ethereum and that. But the, di the difference is what makes L1X even like more special is. It's it's by L1X. Like with with Ethereum, you've got all these projects that launch on different blockchains, for instance, and like um, Poker Starter, Card Starter, uh, Orkham Finance, which is on Cardano. These are all launch pads, and that's the utility of the. That's the utility. They're the launch pad. You buy their token. To buy their token, you then get tier systems, which gives you access to participating like private sales for these projects to launch on them but the beauty of like l1x is it's it's the l1x token so just that as a utility it's going to drive so many people to buy because typically if you want to like get into a launch pad you're you say say you're buying orkham finance which is a cardano launch pad project you you buy in Orkham Finance, and that's only giving you access to that one blockchain. But with it, with this, you gotta you gotta be able to buy L1X and get access to launch pads on eight different blockchains. And that's just to start with. That's not when we've adopted more chains. So you gotta you gotta find that you gotta get start getting people that maybe they own they own um, tokens on different launch pads on different chains and they might think well what's the point i may as well consolidate sell everything and just buy l1x and get exposure to all these different chains so, so the utility the utility just for that like regardless of anything else with l1x is massive because they're gonna they're gonna be back there's gonna be so many people buying l1x tokens purely to get in on launch pads because it's such a it's such a big um money maker for investors to to get on these new projects that are launching I think you're absolutely right. One of the one of the nuanced points I think that people maybe that haven't played the launchpad game yet maybe don't understand is when you stake those tokens because there's a big sale coming out, what happens inevitably after because you have to stake those tokens to participate in the sale. Your tokens have to be staked, and you can do that. Uh, I think from memory of some of the other projects, you know, it's a minimum of ten days or something. Um, so. Once you have staked, let's say you've got half the people that don't win allocation, which means that they don't get to participate in the sale. They then have these DAO tokens they don't need. So, of course, then they go onto the open market, they sell those tokens, which creates sell pressure on that, and inevitably the price drops because there's no other utility for that token. Where Layer 1X is different again, there's no reason for you to do that because you'll still need it. It's the base layer. It's the base layer token. You're still getting benefit from staking it. You're still getting benefit from holding it. It's not just there for that one thing in terms of utility itself, but it has multiple uses. So it gives that broad spectrum range of wanting to keep it more than just for that one sale. So there isn't that same pressure that you're going to have at a standard launch pad. Um, and then some of the other things you touched on as well is that. Obviously, we have access across eight chains, which means that not only can we launch natively onto any chain, but any chain can also launch natively then in reverse back to us, which is just huge, huge in terms of adoption, huge in terms of what we can facilitate. Definitely a, a massive step forward. Yeah, I mean, if, if people, if pe you're going to get people that are buying L1X for the reasons that we're buying it, but you're going you're to get a new wave of people buying L1X for the only reason it gives them access to launch, launch pad the launch pad and gives them access to all these different projects and and they don't there's no like it's not like you get free tokens either like when you when you buy into these launch pads the, the amount of tokens you have 
goes on tiers. So if you've got like hundred or a thousand or ten thousand or hundred thousand, all that does it gives you the it gives you the ability to buy a predetermined amount of tokens. So the lower the lower amount of L one X you'd have, for instance, you 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 maybe you'll, you'll get like a small a small allocation, and then the more you've got, you'll get a bigger allocation. So that that's typically how it works on other launch pads. So you, you're going to get people just holding L one X. And they're going to get the benefits of L1X, but they're not they're not buying it for the reasons we're buying it. They just want the utility of getting access to these to these tokens. So it's it's brought in a it's brought in a whole new a whole new like um, group of people that are going to be interested in L1X, and then they'll come to obviously appreciate L1X as well because they'll realise what more it does. That's just one little that's just one little snippet of what L- I mean. It's it's basically a byproduct of of what l1x is it's not even a it's not even one of the main utilities is it it's just this extra little bonus what you get because you hold l1x token that's it's right it's the end you get a bonus um crypto Nord, did you have comments uh, yeah i was just going to add you know obviously uh machu has kind of teased out the the x perks program on a couple of different amas and I'm just going to echo his his thing of, of what he said is, 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 you know, and this is not financial advice, um, but it, definitely do your own research and things like that. But, uh, you know, this project that, that Machu is launching this expert program is going to be a great opportunity, in my opinion, to um, do something with your L1X tokens right out of the gate. But it opens up so many doors of opportunity for passive income growth and you know we're talking about the launch pad is one of them i can tell you that some of the projects that we've been dropping between machu mike and myself um, some of the things that we've been talking about launching over the next five months will definitely um, be uh, worked into kind of the the launch pad capacity of things right um, those projects that, that are affected by that will definitely come through it, and it's definitely going to be one of those funnel systems to get projects built on the the blockchain. It's definitely going to be funneled through that launch pad. And so, again, not financial advice. you got to do what's best for you. But in the same sense, I would definitely recommend taking a hard look at once the full documentation of the experts program comes out. Uh, see what Machu has set up for everybody here that's an investor. That's definitely it. And I think when that does come out, we will have um, some in-depth documents as well into what all the bits and pieces are and how it works. Um, I've been uh, talking with the community management team about what a DGEN strategy looks like because I think everybody loves a good DGEN strategy. Uh, you know, how can you leverage A to B the best for B type thing, so that's that's definitely coming out. And, and so yeah, just to to wrap up that recap, um, so many good things that are coming through the pipeline. We've got so much stuff coming up. Um, it's just a, a matter of time, obviously, before we're at that point where all of the ducks are in a row, so to speak. And then uh, it, it's just on from there. And as Matthew says, you're in the right right place at the right time um, with the right people and the right project. So it's just. It's around the corner, and uh, we're just holding on for the next bit. Um, did you, did, or Red, or Sam, or Crypto Psycho, or Crypto Nord, any any closing statements around the launch pad, or any of the recap from yesterday that I might have missed? No, yeah, I think uh, you and uh, Cody pretty much covered everything. Uh, so for the wrap up, I think I just want to remind people of the <laughs> the ten thousand L one X coin competition. So you can participate by purchasing in the public sale. The minimum is hundred dollars, of course, and you can stand a chance to win ten thousand coins. Yep, that was from me. Which, you've been in the community enough, you'll know that that is equal to one turtle. You become an immediate turtle for ten thousand uh, L one X coins. Not quite enough <laughs> for a mermaid. Um, there was. But one more thing I think I thought we would use this for is just a, a little bit of education around um, transactions per second and understanding what exactly that means for a blockchain but also for the real world because it was something we were talking about yesterday on one of our uh, group chats uh, around blockchain and it's I think you don't realize how much you don't know about blockchain until you start 
start to dive in and learn things. And it's perfect time for Grover to be here. I don't know if Grover's in the audience somewhere, but it, it'd be amazing to have Grover up here with, with some of his, his knowledge. I know that it's always good when he's in the chat. Uh, but So as an example, transaction per second, we in, in our real world life, um, you know, I'm sure everybody's used Visa or MasterCard or Amex or something like that. Um, you know, we all have a card that we use for, for our gen- general daily basis, day-to-day stuff. Um, and I think what we don't realize is that obviously these things run on payment rails that have uh, restrictions as well as to what they can do and what their capacities are. So to give you an idea, the the transaction per second capacity of Visa, I believe, is 24,000 uh, transactions per second, which if you think about how much of the whole world uses Visa, that's uh, probably not anywhere near as fast as it needs to be. So this has just got me thinking about, you know when you're, you're at the fuel station or you're at the shop or whatever and you go to tap your card and you stand there waiting for a period of time for it to go through, you're, you've are you joined the queue of somewhere in that 24,000 transactions per second to get that push through. And it's obviously then thinking about these things as just purely financial transactions as to how much capability or how much more capability we need in order for blockchain to become mainstream, to become um, the use case for everything. So um, as an example, we have the the capability for 100,000 transactions per second at the moment. Uh, obviously, that puts us a, a fair way above Visa. And, but that also opens the doors for a variety of other things that we can do as well. So, you know, we have transactions on gaming platforms. We have transactions that are inside real-world use case, inside the health system, inside people checking what their uh, their data is onside, inside the blockchain. Like, all of these things are, are going to come into play where we're going to need that large demand for these things. So having that understanding of how stuff works in the real world versus works in, in blockchain, I think, is really important as well to, to get our heads around how epic i suppose the ability of layer one x is going forward knowing that the hundred thousand transactions per second is the basis and we can scale up from there by uh a few points i think was the was the uh standard thing inside the white paper um yeah any thoughts to that i like i don't want to just be talking at you guys as well like i said feel free to throw some comments or questions in there in there or even just jump up on stage to say anything but that was mostly all the things I wanted to get out um, for community from my end. Um, does anybody? Yeah. Does anybody have any questions for any of us? No. Yeah. I absolutely yeah, love yeah. when you start talking, uh, Joe. <laughs> but yeah, adding to the transaction speeds uh, per second, I think it was uh, Kevin that once mentioned that the trans the TPS right now or the transaction per second is a hundred k. But if there is a need. Uh, we can also increase that number to an even higher number. Yeah, I'll I'll add to that. Um, my my goal, I told Kevin a while ago, is is that I want to break that hundred thousand uh, per second transactions per second <laughs> thing, forcing him to have to do that upgrade. Um, we with one of the projects that we are planning on rolling out. Uh, in the next five months or so, uh, just one of those could probably do that. Um, not mentioning what it's going to be, but uh, uh, if it follows suit with with uh, a similar model that's done in Web two space, mobile space, it could definitely be there. It, it could definitely be there. And I, I think the other side to that is that people need to really realize with us baking a lot of transactions occurring under the hood so that you only have to have like one um, one click to basically perform multiple transactions into one such as uh, converting this to that and swapping it over here and having this communicate with this other one over there that that uh, crosstalk is definitely going to get us there really, really quick, especially as developers start developing these these unique uh, contracts to communicate with not only uh, users of L1X, but across the multiple blockchains to perform actions and, and functions and features. They we're gonna hit that really, really quick, in my opinion. I think that's something that's 
really pertinent to note as well. Like you think about how slow Ethereum is when it's at its busiest, how long it takes a transaction to go through, how much volume is going through there, etc. If we have all that volume coming across the Layer 1X, uh, as well as other chains, as well as real-world use, as well as our own stuff as well, like we, we need to be able to handle that capacity. And I think it's it'll be an exciting test to see how that goes. Um, I find pushing the edges of technology, that's always... Uh, I, I think it's exciting anyway. Yeah, definitely. And I... If you if you look at if you look at Ethereum for instance, I mean it only does it only does fifteen transactions per second, like fifteen. So you think if you if you put it into comparison, like that's why that's why the gas fees are so long. That's why you get so many failed transactions um, because it it can't handle volume. And you you see that now you get volume. We're in a bear market. It's pretty much all recycled money. There's no new people investing, and you get a, you get a launch on Ethereum. And the, the gas just jumps up from, like, $5 up to $20, $30, and we're in a bear market. So, like, when we're in a bull market, just feel, just think the gas is going to be, like, $100, $150, dollars just to do a transaction. So it, it, it makes it out of reach for people. So, like, if there's an alternative, like, Layer 1X has got to be that alternative because there isn't anyone else that offers the same. And even, even by using... Um, l1x and still launching on ethereum it's still beneficial um purchasing ethereum projects through l1x anyhow because you can just have the one the one token you can just use l1x and i will i will read in um i was reading an article uh from a post i did a couple of days ago and it was Chainlink ccip in in talks with anz bank i'm thinking do they know about l1x yet because believe me like when when L- L1X goes mainstream, just think of the conversations what are going to be having. Start start thinking of banking and processing payment transactions. Like this could be huge. Like if if, if banks on if banks are thinking about onboarding Chainlink CCIP to to for their interoperability and they don't know about L1X yet. So once once people find out about what Layer One X does and it's got it's got some use case behind it, it's 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 being used and people are adopting it i think matu and mike and kevin there's going to be a lot of talks with probably a lot of banks and that's when you start seeing big transactions because then then you then you are processing payments and i'm sure i don't know might be in the works already but i'm sure at some point in the future there'll be a lot of discussions going on around that as well and that's that's when that'll really benefit l1x holders You've just um, given me this flashback in my brain, which is probably totally irrelevant, um, to trying to transfer money to friends from an actual bank account. Like, And I think uh, because I've been in crypto for a while now, I'm spoiled in this way that I, I know I can send them crypto now. And I send it and immediately expect them to have it. Whereas with a bank, that might take three or four days. And I don't think we uh, appreciate how much further forward that crypto is in terms of giving us that uh, personal freedom with finance, uh, you know, away from banks yet. And I I can't wait for real-world adoption to understand that as well. Yeah, I mean, if you think the launch pad, really, that's that's like for retail investors, isn't it, or for DGENs, people that want to get into projects. That is, these are good utilities for, for L1X and adoption. But when you start thinking of like corporate kind of use cases for L1X. That's that's when Layer 1X becomes like significant and it, do, dominant in the blockchain space because like there's no comparison. If you start thinking about transactions through through banking systems and you start thinking of transactions through I don't know uh, maybe maybe you get someone like Blizzard launches a blockchain game that's got an instant um, audience of like million plus gamers and they have layer one x is the base layer that's when you start seeing transactions and that's when you start seeing onboarding and and the, be- the beauty of it is they're being onboarded without even caring about l1x because it's just how the back end works the back end is layer one x but the banking the, the users of the banks the banking system the gamers they don't care it's just that that's just how it runs so you, they're adopting l1x without anyone needing to really care about it it's just the it's just the under the underlying engine of it 
and that's that gets me so excited. Yes, definitely. I think the things that are that are on the way, um, you know, it just obviously we can we press the dream button as to what's coming up, and it, it, that, I think that's the thing. The difference between this and and just speculation is that we know it's all like we all know that it's coming. We all know that this adoption has to happen eventually. Like with the um, adoption from things like the ETFs from BlackRock, it's not going away. Crypto, like everybody talks about crypto being dead, or it's it's not dead, or it's dying again, or it's not dying again. You know, we go in these cycles that we're all aware of now. But it, I think that now we're at this point where we've come too far. We're not going back. So we're we're talking about the things that are coming up. Like these are going to happen. These are going to be things. You'll be playing video games, and you know there'll be blockchain running in the background where there's you know thousands of transactions happening between different players for for their you know different uh different stuff their different pieces inside the games all that sort of stuff so that's definitely coming up and i think it's we're, we're right at the precipice of excitement uh for all of that but let's let's uh before we get way off topic let's start to wrap this up uh get some closing comments from from any of the guys once again thanks everybody for jumping on it's been uh, I think a really good community space for just diving into a lot of different topics and, and letting us as a community just chat shop as well about what's going on with crypto. Um, but I'll get a closing statement for any of the guys that are, that are up here. You, you, are, you get one crypto psycho because you're still on stage. So um, do you want to kick us off? Sorry, I was on mute. Nah, well, just quickly, just want to, everyone that's here, uh, on everyone that's listening to this, this recording, just give yourself a pat on the back for finding L1X because believe me, you found a unicorn. And by the time everyone else finds out about it when we launch in January, okay, they're going to get in early, but they're not they're not getting in as early as us. So yeah, just a big hats off to everyone that's found L1X and invested in it or contributed to it, I should say. Awesome, thanks, thanks, Crypto Psycho, and uh, maybe Crypto Nord if you want to jump in next. Yeah, for sure. Um, as everybody knows, I'm I'm a huge fan of just getting into the what ifs, um, and and I'm really excited for it. And if we take a look at where we're headed, yes, we are headed towards a, another bull market soon, um, but I also think that we're headed towards another evolution. Um, that's not just happening inside of L1X. It's it's definitely ha- ha- uh, happening outside with all the other projects, the wallets, you know, things like that. They're, they're innovating, they're, they're evolving into the next phase of their products, which is great to see um, from a design, from a UI, UX standpoint. It's good to see that other projects are doing that. Um, with that being said, I am a big, big believer that, you know, we, we have only scratched the surface in the sense of coins, payments, um, NFTs, games, you know, things like that. That's just barely scratching the surface of what blockchain technology can do. And the real adoption that I think we'll move towards is when we can actually start integrating real world services into using L1X. I've had an opportunity to work or speak with about three different business, big businesses since I've been back to the States about leveraging L1X technology and, and they're mainstream. They're, they're not, not into crypto, um, but they're definitely seeing how they could de- benefit from using the data components of the blockchain, the, um, the security behind it and, and everything that way. So I, I, I extend out the call to everybody that's listening that will go back and listen to this that uh, whatever profession you are, try to figure out ways to start integrating crypto into your into what you do, um, because that's when we're going to have real adoption. Uh, is is when somebody brings another use case um, to to the main stage uh, of crypto that it can be put in the same same caliber as a coin or an NFT or a game. So I encourage you to think about that. Spread the word. Um, thanks everybody for being here and I'll talk to you guys later perfect thanks crypto not it's always a, as I said before it's always a pleasure having you here and and I, I also enjoy the what ifs the the deep dive into what happens if we get there um, and then so let's uh, dive over maybe Sam Sam or Red yeah 
Uh, so, I just want to say that uh, thank you everyone for being here. Uh, even though me, Joe and Red, we are the community managers, I still think that you guys are the most important part of the L1X. Yes, the team works very hard, we work very hard, but still, it's you guys that are running the show. So if you guys have any ideas, suggestions, stuff like that, feel free to reach out to any of us. That's yeah, and I'll, from me. Yeah, and I'll follow up with a uh, shout out to uh, the community members, the uh, the top chat, the uh, excellent um, X-Guard moderators that we have. Uh, always uh, around the clock answering uh, questions and uh, keeping uh, things going in the community. One other thing, uh, just to uh, reemphasize, there's nine days left in that 10K giveaway. Every $100 uh, contribution gets you one ticket. So uh, take advantage of that. Um, you'll definitely need uh, L1X coins, not financial advice for any uh, you know, staking options and the X perks program and uh, more information will definitely be put on that but now is a, a good time to uh, take advantage of the uh, pr current pricing and the current contest awesome guys so once again thanks to everybody that, that jumped up and threw their threw a bit in and had a chat with the community and and you guys for commenting as well and being here with us in this journey i know it's a you know for some of you it's the middle of the day some of you it's the middle of the work day some of you it's the middle of the night even um, so, you know, we, we do see you, we appreciate having you here and being a part of the community. And as, as Sam said, you know, without you guys, it's, uh, it's just something that doesn't exist. Well, it exists and nothing happens. So, you know, we need everybody to be a part of this journey together. And I think it's, uh, I can think of no better people to have here with us for this moment as well. So, um, once again, thanks everybody for jumping on. We'll wrap that there and we will see you on the next one. Uh, and but any questions, any any concerns, like always, just throw them in the community, push them up through Discord, open a ticket, anything you need. Um, our moderators, our community managers are here from that, that front line to look after you guys. So um, just prepare yourself for the coming weeks because there's a lot of big stuff happening, and we will see you all very soon. Thanks, guys.